I'm so annoyed. Why doesn't the industry just come to one single standard? For once, I do agree the industry needs a single standard. <laughs> it will solve all of these nightmares, all of these problems and headaches. <laughs> uh, not sorry, the time machine has this little bento box. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't like it. I mean, we rather we do really want a saddle bag. I don't even have that. Just yeah. put it in your 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 jersey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> your bicycle yeah, should do your work for no, you. No, why so, are you doing the work so, for so the bicycle? What, what, what do you have in there? What, what, what's so important and that you need a box on the frame? No, I can't fit this bag in. I have no idea how to put this bag in. <laughs> Record. No. <laughs> okay, shall we just let's start. Let's start again. Okay, okay. Aaron, thank you so much for coming again. You have been on the show before <laughs> yeah. with the SL7, and we were just saying, you know, it's so much more better and much more comfortable to film at night. The last time we filmed, <laughs> we were just right up there, and we were scorching hot. My camera fried. You were sweating. Oh, yeah. I was sweating. Um, and you had that SL7 not long ago, and now you have the Orbia. Hmm. We'll get into that a little bit later. But for those who have not watched hmm. the um, your video, your interview. Could you give us just a bit of a recap about your background, about your cycling journey? Okay, thanks for having me again here. Yeah, I kind of feel I'm taking up a lot of airtime. So yeah, so I think I first started cycling around 10 to 12 years ago in university. Back then I was like a kid, I wanted a hobby, wanted something to get away from my studies once in a while. So I first started cycling as a second hobby. In, I mean in parallel to my CCA. I think it was archery back then. So I started on a mountain bike. My first bicycle was something my dad bought for me. I think it was from a shop called Sun Wat, which was at Upper Changi Road, was it? I think it was Upper Changi Road. So my first bicycle actually was an Obeya. Mm. <laughs> yeah, which so... One? Hmm? Which one? It was an Obeya Sherpa. Okay. It's a mountain bike. I think it was an Obeya Sherpa. I can't remember the model number really. It's mm. a very old bicycle in today's standards. But I love that bike to nuts. I love that bike to bits. So, a uh, full mountain bike. It was this break everything back then already. And I used that bike as a mountain bike to go and like go on trails, off-road riding. And as I hanged out more with mountain bikers, I started going more towards the full SAS side. Mm. <laughs> so I ran on full mountain bike after that. Mm. But I think after a while, because one of the mountain biker group guys also had a road bike, then we started, I started going more into the road bike as well. But I think back then the balance was still more towards the mountain bike side. The road bike is just sort of a secondary hobby. Uh, fast forward a year later, Cycling with a friend along Mount Faber. He had a small accident. <laughs> and after he crashed, we all sort of decided that maybe you should take a break from road bike. Unfortunately, my break lasted for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> so in between, so, what were you doing in the 15 years? I just grew fat. Okay. okay. That's all I did for 15 years, I just grew fat. No, no cycling at all? No cycling. Did you pick I mean, up I, any other hobby? I did do my mountain bike. Okay. I just stayed on mountain biking. Okay. But I don't think I ever got back onto the road. In fact, I only did road cycling really just to build fitness. So I could bring my mountain bike for the Jamboree Epic in Malaysia. Mm. So the road bike, I didn't cycle on the road because I wanted to do road cycling. The road cycling was to support my fitness in mountain biking. So I think that was about 15, 12, 15 years ago. So during COVID, I decided to become a COVID cyclist again since I was stuck at home. I rebuilt my mountain bike again. Because when I brought my bike to the bike shop, the boss, Jia Long, decided, I like, advised hey, bro, I think you just get a new bike. <laughs> mm. And I think I look at the modern. I think I look at the modern iteration of mountain bikes. They have really progressed beyond what it was like ten years ago. So I decided to just build a whole new mountain bike. So I was very happy mountain biking for a while. That was until June, when my friends decided all of us were getting too fat really. So they decided to start road biking as well. I brought up my mountain bike to join them. Felt that using a mountain bike on the road wasn't the best solution, given that I'm wearing out my gears, I'm wearing out the suspension parts. A mountain bike should be used in the mountain trails. So I decided I should get a road bike. So I decided to get a road bike. And that's where the arms race started. So I got a tri band, someone got a mountain bike, then after I upgraded from the tri band to a TCR, someone upgraded his tri band, his, someone upgraded to a tri band. Then from the tri band, it went to another giant. And somehow the bike just started increasing in scale. In, in what span was this? What was the timeline like? This was literally just last year, March. Oh my goodness, you guys. So in last year, March, <laughs> I've gone from a tri band to a TCR to an SL7, and finally to this. Huh. My friends have gone from mountain bikes to tri bands to I think it's a Super 6 and now he's looking at the new bike already. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so another guy also went from He came on my channel, right? He was on our channel. What bike is he riding? Is he still riding the He's still riding SL he's still riding a Super 6. Okay. Why like is he stopped eating at? grass for now already? He's oh. built up enough money to actually have proper meals now. Okay, okay. Mm. So he's no longer spread out like a pork chop anymore? No longer. His 
less of a pork chop now. We are all pork chops. <laughs> Just that the pork chop ratio of lean to fat ratio is a bit less now. Right, hopefully, right. hopefully. <laughs> okay, so the, the last time we filmed, you had the SL7. Now Correct. this is the Orbea. Orca Aero 2022. Mm. Orbea doesn't seem to be a very popular brand here in Singapore. So why the Orbea? Why the Orbea? I think that... Okay, so when I first had my SL7, I kind of liked it. But it was a bike that I bought because it was an all-in-one. So to me, it was a logical solution. Get this bike first, really go and ride. Just take the bike, go and ride it out. Now, I could have ridden on my TCL to be honest. But I think that at the point of time, I kind of wanted... The TCR had something, it was a really comfortable bike, but something was lacking in it. I'm not, or maybe I was just a slow cyclist, no matter what. So when I had my SL7, it really gave me an experience that my TCR never gave me. Which could be maybe the wheels were better. The components on the SL7 were a lot better, to be honest. In fairness, the wheels were deeper, they were lighter. The gears were 12 speed to 11 speed and they were electronic shifting. So I think I enjoyed my time on SL7 a lot more. But the more I rode it, I brought it to places like uh, Audex 200, went to Malaysia, did the Kulai rides, did Mersing, all that. And as I rode it, I felt that it's an awesome bike. But because it did everything so well, there was never that aha moment where you really felt like this is awesome. So I kind of felt like I wanted something more. Now, I, I know that some people love, okay, I still love the SL7. As an all-in-one bike, nothing beats it. That is my frank opinion. I mean, you have the, okay, you have, What's that brand again? Pinarello? Pinarello and T's SL7 are probably like sibling, they're probably like counterparts to each other. So I think that as the Prince, sorry, Pinarello is more towards the aero side, SL7 more towards the lightweight climbing aero side. So I think they sort of balance each other, but SL7 to me was a bike that lacked that sense of speed when I when really put power in. Now I, don't, I can't put a lot of power, My, I'm not a very strong cyclist. But I felt that somehow it wasn't it didn't give me the feeling I wanted, especially on places like West Coast Highway, TMC, when I'm just switch off your mind, listen to the music and just chase the guy in front of you. That's what I want to do. So I started looking around. So my two criteria for a bicycle was one, I wanted something that could put storage, that had integrated storage because I was very fed up with trying to have the saddle back behind. So one problem I had with the saddle back was trying to put my Garmin Varia along with the rear view camera, along with a saddle back all in one system. <laughs> So I know that most cyclists probably say you don't need that many things, but I felt like I wanted them anyway. Let me just say this bike looks like as if you are going on a on a tour, right? On a tour, like you know, from Malaysia, uh, from Malaysia all the way to you know somewhere in China. Or Actually, to be fair, I bought this my Audex four hundred. I did my Audex four hundred in Malaysia. It is I okay. I say I did it. I didn't complete it. Mm. Halfway, I started dying, but I bought it for the Audex four hundred, and it wasn't a bike that failed. It was actually my lack of. I think I'll talk about it later, but it wasn't the bicycle's problem. But it looks like a very complicated bike right now. Like there's just so many things going on. I love on. the looks of it. I love it for that purpose. It looks It looks like a touring bike now. Mm. It just okay, let me just okay, once I think this I should look less of a touring okay. bike. Maybe let's just go straight into the, into this. Uh can you run us through? Okay, so I got this bicycle. Now I think what the problem why you mentioned earlier, why Obey is such a rare brand is because not I think it's because the stocks in the global, sh I mean, we are facing, we were in a pandemic, stocks have been struggling to catch up and I think because of that local digital hasn't been able to get a lot of the bicycles out. So I was very focused, I wanted a bicycle that integrated storage, I looked around, I decided, hey, it's either the BMC Time Machine or the Orbea Orca Aero 2022. Now between these two, the, the, the Time Machine has been out for three years already. So I say, if I'm going to pay money for a bicycle, I'm not going to buy something that's going to be fresh in the next two years. I I am kind of a cyclist. I mean, people do say that you should cycle for the sake of cycling. But I like my, I want to enjoy cycling my bicycle and I'm kind of a guy who, I'm not ashamed to say I'm kind of like the latest is greatest. So I want my bicycle to be new. So that really left only the Orca 22. So I looked around, I called the local distro. I said, when can you get a bicycle in? In my size 47. They say, if you order one this year, you can get it hopefully in 2023. Sorry, is this from Canada? It's not. Oh. I called Canada, they said 2023 you can get it, probably, hopefully. Then I said, that is way too long. So I look, looked around, I found a place somewhere out of this country that had it. I booked my ticket, went to the shop, <laughs> dealt with them, shipped the bicycle back, and I got it in two weeks. That's so much trouble though. Okay, it's a lot of trouble, but I got my bicycle basically one year before what they can deliver locally. 
So I mean, I really wanted a bicycle now. If I'm going to change a bicycle, I want to get it now. When I'm in that process of thinking, I want a bicycle now, I really want to test it out already. Rather than I wait a full year, and then I don't know if by the time I pay my deposit, maybe at some BMC comes with a new road, road bike, and I'll be stuck having paid them a deposit with a bicycle that I feel like, ah, oh, damn it. Mm. Mm. So it is a lot of trouble. I don't disagree with that. But I think at the end of it, I felt that trouble has paid off because I'm able to start enjoying cycling on a bicycle that I really, really want to enjoy. Because I think cycling is twofold. I, you can enjoy cycling for the sake of cycling, which any bikes doesn't matter. You just want to cycle. For me, I kind of want to cycle to enjoy my gears as well. So I'm more of a casual cyclist. I'm not trying to win some TDF medal, Tour de France medal. I'm not trying to enter some crit. I just want to cycle with people I enjoy cycling with on a bicycle that I enjoy cycling on. Mm. So I think that was my thought process when I tried to justify why am I willing to go through that much trouble just to bring the bicycle in as quickly as possible. So yeah, book the ticket, went there, dealt with the dealer. Here's the money. Help me bring it back to Singapore. Back in the box, I literally dragged it back, got the ticket, shipped it back again. So yeah. <laughs> Do you think you're possibly the only one with this bike right now? Here Definitely in not. Because when I went to Can Asia a couple of months ago to get spare parts, because I wanted to get uh, not actually spare parts, I wanted to get uh, what's that thing called a chain dropper? What's that thing called a chain catcher? Chain catcher. Yeah, there was another Orbe or car being built. Ah. Mm, which was rather annoying. But they told you they, you couldn't get it, right? They told me that I couldn't get it, I needed to wait until But they had one that's in the shop. They had one being built outside, but the colour was... I think the colour could have been... I think the colour wasn't really my preference. Mm. So, and the size didn't match as well. Okay. Because I needed a size 47, I'm not a very tall guy. Yeah, so let's talk about sizing. Uh, mm. Size 47, you are you stand at 161cm tall. Yep. Uh, the, the Two angel soft spots immediately out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, how do you know this was the size for you? Uh, I kind of mesh it to my SL7 size because I was, I was superbly comfortable with my SL7. When I did all my rides, there was never a moment of discomfort on it. There was a moment of weaknesses, but never discomfort. So I sort of knew that the geometry was about where I needed to be. At the most, I need to tweak would be maybe just the size, the length of the stem, and maybe the height of the saddle, mm. which I'm still in the process of tweaking. Be- being a 2022 model, year model bike, mm. I'm surprised that the cockpit is still not integrated. It's horrifying, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I would assume most bike companies by now would have mm. already progressed to that. I know even the SL7 still has, you know, a, a two-piece cockpit. Correct. But I would, do you, don't you think that nowadays most manufacturers are going just for a single co- single piece cockpit? Okay, actually that's a re- fair point because I think that when this bicycle was being discussed on the Reynolds Fatos, is that his name? One of the channels, bicycle channels? He mentioned this was a bicycle that's actually, he highly, I wouldn't say highly recommended it, but he had a rather positive opinion of it precisely because of the handlebar. But I get the feeling that a lot of the earlier cyclists in that generation or people started cycling earlier on, they dislike integrated handlebar precisely because it is not something they can easily tweak. I agree with that. Mm. I, I don't like so, <laughs> yeah. so I guess, yeah, I think it's a generation thing. So for me, I see that as I'm kind of ambivalent to it. Mm. Even if the thing I can't tweak it, I could always just buy integrated one piece. Mm. So for me now, I guess it works for me because I can change the handlebar, I can change the stem to finally find the one that I like. And once I know that this is the size I want and this is the length of the stem that I want, maybe then I'll get the one piece integrated. Mm. But I am looking to change this to one piece integrated because I do think that they do provide a significant amount of advantage, especially in the weight. Weight, yeah, for sure. This bicycle is porky. Let's talk about weight. What is the weight? Ah. Okay, the ironies I weighed in the bicycle shop, it was 7.8. That's clean, right? Without anything on. Clean without anything on. I weighed it at home holding it, it became 8 kg. How come? Was the gravitational pull at home different? I think at the bike shop, maybe like, it's more, it's a superior environment <laughs> compared to my home environment, which is just some plat place. So you guys want to weigh your bike, weigh your bike at the bike shop, not at the at home yeah, or even weigh at home. Park. No, let's weigh at the bike shop. <laughs> your skills are better. We, we'll see later when we weigh your the bike. Uh, um, let's let's remove everything when we weigh mm. your bike and let's see whether it matches up to 7.8 or 8 kilos. I think it's it. I imagine it was 8 kg. 8 kg? So if I change the handlebar to one piece in greater, I will shave off 100 gram mm. immediately. I've been slowly... Okay, I wouldn't say I'm trying to shave off weight, but all the bolts, I'm slowly changing it to titanium, mainly for the colour, to be honest. Okay. Like, all the bolts here, I'm trying to slowly swap it out for gold colour bolts. Right, right. Just for the colour scheme. I think it looks better. <laughs> Let's take a minute to describe your frame. The fork is very curvy. It actually bowls out yeah. a little bit over here. It reminds me a bit of the F8. 
Is it the Lotus? F8, F10, uh, the, the Pinarello. Oh, the Pinarello. The F8 okay. or F10, it's a bit, uh, it's not so curvy. But it comes out, it sticks yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And um, the rear seat stay is very funky as well. It's also hmm. very curvy. Uh, not sure what to make out of it. <laughs> they say it's supposed, okay. If I were to put this bike and I overlay it on the previous Orbea TT bike, hmm. the Ordu, I think they look very similar. But I think the fork, right? Don't you think it sort of resembles the Lotus, that Lotus Hope? Time trial bicycle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you remember yeah. that the one the super yeah, huge? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think that's the idea of going for like most bike manufacturers seem to be going for like as tucked in as possible. Mm. The bicycle just went all the way out like did tucked in, I'm gonna mm. go the opposite. <laughs> did, do you know the weight of the frame? It's not it's not as a one point one. Yeah, yeah. 1. It, it looks pretty heavy. Is it because of that? It is heavy. There? I think that not only did they okay, a lot of bicycles you have two ways to make it lighter. Either you can use T one thousand one hundred, which would make it a very light bicycle. What's T one thousand one hundred? So the carbon so you have the 600, 700, 800, 1001, I think. Different ranges, I'm not an expert on that. But I know that the higher up the number, the lighter it is, but the more brittle it is. So you need to do a compromise. Mm. So I think they didn't use the most, the lightest or the most brittle carbon, but that gave it a bit of strength and uh, resilience, uh, durability. Mm. And I think also the bottom bracket, all these bottom brackets are huge in line with the new UCI ruling. So, so yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, so, continue. What is uh, so, so is this meant to? I mean, obviously, it looks like an aero bike, but the fact that there's a bottle, you know, this this box down there, is cheating. Yeah, <laughs> this thing is actually taken from the TT bike. So it's not UCI legal. It is not UCI legal, but hey, yeah. I don't write UCI rules. I'm not gonna take part in the quit. <laughs> Who cares? And, and also the bottle cages, right? This one, I'm assuming, came with. Came oh with yeah, the it frame. comes with it. But what about the real one? Oh, the real one does not. This is this is practical. <laughs> It may be UCI illegal, it may be fast, but it's no point if I can only last until Monday and I die. So so this bottle cage came with the frame? This, okay, this bottle cage, the one in front, yeah. the evil one came with the frame. Including the bottle? Yes, including the bottle. It's the most impractical bottle in the world, I'll explain why later. Mm. The bottom storage compartment that you can fit the banana in, mm. perfect for one banana, right, mid right meal, also comes with a bicycle. Okay. Mm. Um, this does not. Right, right. Very weird that they don't provide two bottle cages. Oh, bottle. they actually say they don't because they don't recommend it. Because it sort of gets in the way of each uh, other. I tried it. it, it does not work. And, and it's impractical in Singapore. La. Right. So you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume you bought this bottle cage just so that you can pull it up on the side. Oh yeah. Because you can't go it up, can't pull it up anymore because the top tube is Same for my SL7, I'm, I can't use bicycles that are larger. Oh, because of the size. Mm. Okay. Uh, could you just quickly, mm. yeah. yeah go ahead. That's what you're saying. If you could quickly do a run through of your, your bike components that you have on. So, the bike came stock originally with some... Okay, so the bike came stock as a drive... The Sorry, I should... Okay, may I rephrase it? The bicycle came stock with a rival. I think it was a rival AXS. So when I was quoted the price for the bicycle, I, I raised it to him. I said, uh, I really don't want rival. Can I have trail speed? Because everyone wants the trail speed. So I said, can I have Altegra? So after a bit of negotiation, we managed to take it out. Came with Altegra. So I'm not sure if I can say it came stock with trail speed. It's definitely not stock, but when I bought it, it already had an Altegra trail speed. Uh, it came with, uh, what's that thing called? Some Reynolds, what was it? I can't remember the brand, some aluminum wheel. So I switched the wheels out to, holy shit, wait, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry for the masking tape. I have no idea where that came from. It just <laughs> came from... Princeton uh. Carbon Sleep Drag 565. No, I'm, I'm sorry, this wasn't supposed to be there. I think when I was cycling up, I picked up some rubbish along the way. It was stuck to the wheels. Can I can I get some also? Where do you wish which path do you I go? I think you cycle, like, once you cycle up the path there, you'll see it sticking to your wheel. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have no idea where this came from. It just popped up there. So, I did quite a bit of changes. One, to improve the aerialness. Because I mean deep, I mean it's aero, but it needs deeper wheels. And I also changed the cranks to sort of go with a team of trying to reduce weight. Mm. Because if I can't lose weight myself, I myself reduce the weight on the bicycle. <laughs> it's easier that way. I'm at a point where it's easier to throw money to reduce weight here. But, but the, the, the bike is already heavy in the first place. It is heavy, but I mean it's part of the fun of it. So I'm, okay, that, I think some people do seriously reduce weight for the performance. I've really accepted that even if I lose 5 kg off here, this 5 kg here is not going anywhere. <laughs> so I decided, never mind, I'm just going to try and reduce weight just so I can see the numbers there showing 7. <laughs> it is, uh, I'm just enjoying the process of reducing the weight. The performance gains bug off, doesn't mm. matter to me at this point. Mm. So I'm just having fun reducing the weight. Mm -hmm. The performance, nah, doesn't matter. So what wheels are these? So these are light wheels. Okay, so these are light bicycles. AR5650, oh, I mean, sorry, 565. <laughs> okay, these are light wheels, light bicycle, AR565 with the uh, X-Flow design. Now, this X-Flow is meant to have this wavy feature that is no way resembles another bicycle wheel brand. 
and they come with common spokes. So I think what I really liked about this bicycle brand, why I chose this bicycle wheel, rather than all the other competitors like Bora, uh, Princeton, or maybe even DT Swiss, was I liked the fact that I could really customize it to the point where it offered me the exact performance that I wanted for the weight point. Mm. So I wanted a wheel that was minimally 55 and above. I wanted a wheel that was at least 30 mm because I mean, moving forward, we are going to look at 28 wheels. I mean tires, I don't have 25, I don't have 28 tires, so these are 25. I'll have to try it for once. But I wanted a bicycle that was future proof. So when I looked around in the market, the only one that offered me these specs were light bicycle, I think Prince, uh, Princeton. Boma I think doesn't. Mm. Boma is 28. DT Swiss, I think these are the few brands. And I think no, so one more is uh, Rovell, the new Rovells. The only problem was, these wheels came in at 1.3 kg. Oh, well, these are carbon tie. Hubs. Carbon spokes, carbon TI. So basically this was a, this is a weight mini set of wheels. And these are Chinese, this, this, this rim is from China, right? It's these Chinese are all brand. China wheels. I'm very proud of them. They are my China wheels. Uh, what is the price if I may ask? They were 1.7 k USD. Okay, what's yeah, the process cheap. like of ordering this? this so when I rims? ordered it, I basically sent, I didn't even send them an order form. I basically emailed their customers, customer support. I told them that my friend did 3D build with you guys. I want the same build. I want it as light as possible. What can you do? So they offered me the flyweight option and they offered me carbon spokes and they offered me the carbon TI hubs. So there are hubs that are lighter, but from what my friend was research researching, he mentioned that carbon TI probably is one of the more reliable brands for a weight we need build. You could go lighter, but you sacrifice too much of the reliability for it to be something that you might want to consider. So I think this view to me, represents what I want in a view, which is it's reliable, it is light, it is wide, and it has funky X-flow pattern. Let me just say something. Mm. This is meant to be light, but you have valve caps here, man. This is adding oh, weight. Yeah. So why do I have this here? I couldn't, at the moment, I'm still trying to look for something lighter than this. And I, yeah, I'm still looking for it. But why do you need it just removed? Lah? Hmm? Why, why do you need the caps on? Not mm. pro, man. Looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's adding weight, it's defying it's the purpose weight, of it. <laughs> Hack. Okay. Uh, well, no, just hack it. <laughs> so so what do you, what's your opinion on I this? I actually added weights to the bicycle, you know, just to, for the color theme. If you look at the other side, my disc brakes, I've changed the locking ring to S-Works. Oh. Just for the gold color. Oh my it's god. It's actually even heavier than the stock aluminum. <laughs> but never mind. Look fast, can it really? <laughs> look fast is the most important. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Um, um, Oh, sorry, I, I just don't know yeah, what to ask. So, <laughs> no, okay, so I was going to say, what is the review like on these wheels? Sorry? What is your review like? My on review wheels? on these wheels, okay, I've only had... Okay, it's definitely better than stock aluminum wheels. It was heavy, it was draggy, but I think it was bomb-proof. Okay, I mean, I went to Malaysia, mercing the roads there, I just horrid. I was just banging myself, just killing myself over there, but they were bomb-proof. They survived a lot of things. I think these wheels are wheels that I can trust to cycle in Singapore. And I can trust to go on TMC high speed. Even as a bit of road clatter, I would probably. I even done a few bunny hops over it when I can't avoid the pot, I just bunny hop over it. <laughs> I mean, it's better than going through the bun. It's better than going through the pot who at full speed, mm. full tilt, and then either you hit your rims or you crash or whatever it is. Mm. So you can take a bunny hop. Right. And I'm not light. Okay. So that works. So I think the view is very comfortable. The acceleration is instantaneous. It accelerates really, really quickly. Mm. So I know it is not fully the bicycle. Because I've ridden with this bicycle on the stock wheels and I switched the wheels and that was the only difference. Yeah. So it is fast, it's comfortable, it's light. If the only drawback I think about these wheels is that it doesn't have some funky uh, wake 5650 on it <laughs> or, or very cool radial spokes. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the only drawback about it. Right. But I do agree that, I mean, I do aspire one day towards trying these brands. Lah. But I just want these companies to catch up with 2022. I feel like they're still building wheels for 2010. When you should be going towards 30 mm wide wheels, I mean wide rims. You should be going towards deeper wheels, lighter wheels, carbon spokes, for instance. I don't see why they're still using aluminum spoke. It's we are already in 2022. Hmm. So I know a lot of people don't disagree that. I know they will disagree that. In fact, I had a discussion about this the other day. The first thing they asked was, what makes you say that Bora is outdated? Hmm. And it sparked off an entire long discussion with me and some other guys. <laughs> I so, just decided to just stay out of it. I've stayed my piece, I'm just gonna stay out. Then some guy continued the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, I'm going to move on from the mm. wheel sets. So this came with uh, Altegra Tail Speed. You changed the crank. crank arm. So I changed the crank arm, I changed the... What's this What's this thing called? The spider piece, is it? Yeah. Sige Power Meter. Uh, Sige, yep. Uh, tell us more about the reason for Sige Power Meter and the crank arms. Okay. The first reason why I wanted to change was I didn't want to use Altegra Crank because of the reports of delamination. The one That's that the first Harbini one. did. Yeah, Harbini did. I do think it's a bit of an exaggeration, given that it's probably one out of a thousand pieces, okay? And even if you bring it to the shop, they probably say, okay, we'll swap it for you. I'm very sure Hableong will support you in this. I have full trust in them. Unfortunately, I don't want to be in a situation where it delaminates while I'm cycling. <laughs> and I thought to myself, if I'm going to change it, I might as well change to something more in line with the idea of reducing weight. And this bicycle came with a crank that's 170. I needed 165. Hmm. So I thought if I'm going to do this, I might as well just go all the way. So I went for the Volta Aldo, and I went for the Seagate Power Meter, precisely so that I can keep the Altegra, what's it, the Hyperglide Plus. What is the Hyperglide Plus? I know it's a new technology for Tales people. Okay, the Hyperglide Plus is really just, it's a bow over from the mountain biking, type of shifting, where they actually have a couple of ramps, specially designed to so-called catch onto the chain that allows it to shift under power. I have used it on my mountain bike, which is a Dior, Dior XT, I love it. So I decided if I'm going to change to Altegra, I want to keep this system. Now, I know a lot of people say you can just, don't, I mean, just don't put power in your shifting. But to me, if my job is just to pedal. The bicycle should do everything else. Why should I bother the thing? Oh, if I'm shifting, I shouldn't put power. That's not my job. That's the bicycle's job to figure that out. Mm, mm. So I decided, okay, just go with that. Mm. And in order to keep this system as a whole, the only way was to use crank arms and power meters that were compatible. I could use the Altegra one, but it's expensive. And the lamination. So Volta was the only one to go for it. Mm. Hmm. Uh, running a bit short of time, so okay, uh, there are mountain bike pedals. If yeah. you guys want to know the reason why, just watch the other video. Yeah, yeah. Explain it. I don't want to sound like we are repeating the same old shit I'm poor. again. I have no money to change. <laughs> uh, anything else that's special on the bike that you want to mention before we move on to IG questions? There are a lot of questions there. Okay, I think a lot of people are asking about the bot. I think they'll be asking about why this bicycle and why not all the others. I just think hmm. the main reason I just like the looks of it. Hmm. I decided to put this here so that I could carry more water mm. when I'm going for long distance riding. Mm. And I think it's a very nice way to just keep everything together. Mm. It's a very compact system and supposedly water bottles behind less are more aero. Mm. The water bottle is supposedly able to add watts. It gives me three more watts, which is probably negated by my bill, by my belly butt, by my belly. <laughs> so that works too. Right. Mm. Uh, quick one, uh, one minute on the review of the frame and what are your dislikes? The weight. I really do not like the weight. I think it should be lighter, but hey, I mean, you give, you win some, you lose some. Yeah. And I mean, I tried to lose weight. I could have used the other more expensive cranks, but I heard they break, so I uh, forget it. But uh, in terms of stiffness, people like to talk about stiffness, oh, it's stiff. and It is so fast. So even on the old wheels, I was, the first serious ride I had with this, when I changed the stem length, I changed the handlebar, I changed a couple of other things, when I really felt comfortable, was along with the uh, West Coast Highway. My Garmin died because I forgot to charge it. I thought solar power means can charge indoors. Mm. Apparently solar power 1040 does not mean you can charge indoors. <laughs> so it just died. I went West Coast Highway. I knew that I didn't know what speed I was cycling. I was just chasing it for me. I felt comfortable. It gave me that moment of, gosh, this is what I bought this bicycle for. Mm. I didn't know what speed I was traveling. So I asked them later, what speed were we going at? The guy behind me told, us, told me that we were going, I was, he was chasing us at 42 and we were still pulling away. Mm. Okay. So I guess, yeah. Okay, we move on to the Instagram Q&A. If you guys want to submit mm. your questions, you can do so on my, by replying onto my IG stories when I post them up. You ready, Aaron? Yep, sure. Fire away. Where is the saddle to bar drop? Sorry, where's the saddle to bar drop? <laughs> okay. The number one reason is I'm too lazy to cut it. I got this bicycle less than one month ago. What do you mean by too lazy to cut it? Can't you just drop it by yourself? Just Le drop the space down. I mean, I could, but I'm lazy. <laughs> okay, so you mean you could have gone lower? I could have gone lower, but I'm just lazy. Will you go so do so eventually? When I go to a bike fit, I can ask the bike fit to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, my job is just to cycle. Everything else, I really feel that I want to just leave it to people who are really, really skilled in doing it and wouldn't mess up. I literally had to re-bleed my disc brakes because I tried to change pads. Huh? I have no idea how that happened. I found... I have no, I, I have no <laughs> idea how that happened. But literally, just because I tried to change the disc pads, I ended up having to bring it down to re-bleed. 
but because but, I saw oil, I saw yeah, I started leaking brake fluid. Oh, maybe so it wasn't I decided tight. I would never do any more bike maintenance in my life. Oh, that shouldn't that shouldn't put you off from doing bike maintenance, man. I mean, I don't think changing brake pads is very difficult, and I know you, it's not difficult. I know how to do it. Yeah, but I decided that in light of what happened, I shall not do it ever. I shall never <laughs> do it again. So if anything needs to be done, at most I will change the saddle height, mm. and I'll not do anything else. <laughs> That show comes to show that bicycles these days are getting more and more compli- or complex. Or rather, I just want to be lazy. <laughs> a good excuse to send it to the bike shop. I mean, I can have two ways. Either I can just pay money for someone to do it and have a cup of coffee, or I can do it myself. <laughs> I would rather choose to just get someone to do it for me. I know, okay, I know how to do it. I think it's important to know how to do it. You should know how to do these skills. But when it comes to actually needing to do it, I would rather just, you do for me, I'll drink coffee. <laughs> um, okay, I got, I've, got, I've got one question for you. Uh, that I forgot to ask earlier. This is this current group set is Shimano. Previously, when you filmed your your SL7, mm. your SRAM, your take on Shimano and SRAM, which will be your group sets, uh, your preferred group sets, and mm. and going forward, would you stick to Shimano? I mean, I already paid to have a DI2, so I definitely stick to Shimano. But I think SRAM's greatest advantage is that it is very very easy to swap parts. If I wanted to change this saddle, I wanted to pull out the entire seat post, the battery will be hanging onto it. So I think that's a huge problem. You have that cable dangling, it's annoying. You want to shove it back in, you'll be like, shit, please don't hit something. Hmm. SRAM is just take out, you're done. Let's talk and about the, the, the speed of changing gears. A lot of people on SRAM say that it's slow and laggy. Is that true? I don't think it's slow. Okay, I think it's because a lot of them, SRAM takes a while to recognize, is it a front shift or is it a rear shift? So it builds in that lag automatically. I personally find that they are both okay. What I like, however, is that this thing shifts really, really cleanly. So when SRAM you shift, you hear a cluck. There's a very, it's a very disconcerting sound, as if you are trying to kill your gear. But on Shimano, because of the hyperglide, it picks up so cleanly. Mm. I mean, for guys to do mountain biking, when you're going up that stupid 18 degree incline, you can actually shift and you feel it catch very nicely and it pulls. It's a very silent, nice feel. SRAM is just, Clung and <laughs> it's telling you don't do this again. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Shimano is just go, go, go. I'm doing my job. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. So I would, I think both will shift, both will serve you equally well. Mm. If you want to do maintenance yourself, go for SRAM. Mm. You want to let the bike shop do it, you like your performance, just go Shimano. You mm. want to be a lazy person, Shimano's the way. Okay. Why the mismatch of the bar tape? Why the mismatch of the bar tape? I think I know who asked that. A lot Why? of people, a lot of oh, people. Oh, a lot ask. of people yeah. really. Yeah. This cost $23 because it was a Shopee sale. Ah, uh, okay, so just because you're I'm going to change my handlebar anyway. So I decided to just buy the cheapest thing and then heck care. Which handlebar are you going to change to? I'm looking at this. Is this, I think it's a integrated one piece aero handlebar that was recently announced only about, it was announced about half a year ago, but it's recently on Taobao. It only recently went on sale on Taobao. So once I confirm this is the handlebar width that I want, which I'm still tweaking, once I confirm this is the stem length that I want, I'll just swap over to that. And that's when I actually changed to a handlebar tape that matches the color scheme of the bicycle for now. Heck, mm. doesn't matter. It's cheap. Can you please provide more details about and compatibility on Eldu carbon rotor with Seagate power meter with Shimano chain ring? I'm not sure what's... Okay, I'm trying to understand what you mean by the question. If you're asking for the compatibility, I mean, I cycled here, so it works. I didn't get stranded along my person, so it works. Maybe let me let me ask let me ask uh, tweet a little bit of the question. So when I buy a uh, CG mm. power meter, uh, sounds like a dumb question, but obviously it you have to pair it with the right uh, right power meter, right? Ah yes. You can't just get a power meter that's meant no. for everything. Ah, you can't, you can't. Okay. That's so specifically for Shimano. Yep. This one specifically for so Shimano. So how I solved this problem was I asked the guy to do all the work for me. Ah, he appeared on our channel, but he's behind the camera now. <laughs> I asked him to find out what do I need. And help me, please help me press buy. <laughs> Wait, well, can't, can't you go, just go to the website and, and look for it and search it out yourself? Yeah, no, involve research. <laughs> no, but it should be quite, <laughs> it should be quite a clear cut, right? Like, oh, I need no, a CJ power meter for... It's not. So this has, what, 30mm spindle, is it? Yes. So the, you have to consider the spindle yes. and... Okay. So you need to match the BB to the rotor and cr- check you have the correct spindle size, the correct BB size. I'm so, I'm so annoyed. Why doesn't the industry just come to one single standard? For once, I do agree the industry needs a single standard. <laughs> It'll solve all of these nightmares, all of these problems and headaches. <laughs> so I sorry. just want to cycle, I don't want to think. Where do you get a power meter from again? I think it was on Taobao. Yeah, I got it on Taobao. Uh, do, do any local shops here sell these power meters? T3. Bikes and bikes. Uh, bike and bike. And, and I'm going to assume it's much more expensive compared to Taobao and uh, any... Okay, he's nodding, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. 
next question. Let's talk about the storage bin. Okay. What is the what is it called? Because people are here, they're calling it a bento box, a lunch box, a storage they bin. They call it a bento box because when this bike was presented on JCN, the guy literally called it, the guy literally put a banana inside. Using the Mayo configurator. This particular one was actually uh, designed by Banana Man, but he's uh, currently busy fighting crime and so kindly lent us the bike so that we can make this first look video for you. What? I think people used to call things that you put food in bento Could you demonstrate boxes. how you remove this? Oh yeah, sure. I need a tweak. Let me, whoa. Okay, I hope I don't bring this gun over. Let me turn this around a bit. You hold and you pull it down. And then it comes out. So you can pack quite a lot of crap inside. Oh, okay. Later I'll, I'll take a take my yeah. camera and zoom in again. So this is how it comes out. Okay. Okay. So what about that part? It stays there. I can remove it. How? LNG? As in, there's a couple of screws that hold okay. it in place. So then there'll be like a dent in there? No, it's actually flush. Ah. So it's basically, it looks like, it looks like not, it looks like Cervelo to be honest. Mm. I mean, if you look at the Cervelo, the new, what's that thing called? The new Scott foil? I think all the bicycles, they look identical. Mm. And I think they're awesome. Like, I think because they all look identical, I love all those bikes. If I were to buy another Evo bike, just for the fun of it, if I wanted to go weight weenie, Evo bike, I wanted another bicycle as well to play with, I would buy a Scott foil. All right. I, by the way, I hope all, all aero bikes do not come with a storage box next time. Just like a time really? machine. I, I don't like it, man. I love it. it a so bike should be simple and clean, not with all these boxes all over the place. Okay, how about the TN? I mean, the TC. Uh, not TN, sorry. The time machine has this little bento box storage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like it. I mean, we want a, We do really want a saddle bag. I don't even have that. Just Yee. put it in your, your, your jersey. Yee. Yee. <laughs> your bicycle Yee. should do your work for no, you. No, Why so, are you doing the work so, for so the bicycle? What, <laughs> what do you have in there? What, what, what's so important and that you need a box on the frame? Okay, when I was doing my audit, this was important. Because literally, if I'm stranded, I can't call Grab. Okay, so I have like so my. What's that? Oh, this just so it doesn't rattle, but oh, it's just okay. a cover. Piece of cardboard. I have my uh, tubeless plug. What's a tubeless plug? Oh, so when a tubeless tire cannot see you and it's still spewing crap out of the wheels and then block uh, blocking the glass and dirtying the glasses of the guy cycling behind you, you stop. You take this out. You unplug it and you jam this into the hole and this will seal it up. It's a stance dart. It's a lot better than the bacon strips. Have you ever used it before? I don't want to use it. <laughs> I don't want to need to use it. I'm using Silka tubeless sealant though. It's supposedly better. See, I mean. that's the problem with tubeless, right? So complicated. I think it's a give and take. Like you have to choose the proper sealant. Like, I'm using Silka sealant inside, which has carbon based inside. It's supposedly a lot better at sealing. So I do wait. I mean, yeah, it's, it's troublesome, but it's better than changing tires. I would rather this thing seal up than me having to change tires. <laughs> And if this thing really doesn't seal, and this doesn't work, I shall pray I'm in Singapore so I can call Lala Move. <laughs> because I will not change the tire, I will not change this myself. The fact that you run tubeless, you need to bring so much more additional junk. I mean, I feel safe carrying it. <laughs> it's just a pres it's just a safe, it's just feel sa I just feel safer. That thing is smaller than a tube. Oh, that's true. I mean, I do have a tube But here it's I do have a tube. This is the, what, what's, what's this is a turbo, uh, tube oh, oh my god, the $100, $90. Wow, this is 30 bucks. It's expensive, right? Yeah, but I hope I, I mean, it's $30, it's been here for a long time. <laughs> I've had it since last year, I've never used it. Okay, what else do you have in there? Where's the banana? Uh, I have a spare battery for my shifter. Huh? So wait, 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 what? Spare battery for a shifter? Yeah, what, spare what battery for my shifter. You mean Is shifters like a, have a battery? Yeah. Is it only for the new 12 speed or what? It's only for the new 12 speed. So I have one coin cell battery in each side. In each side? Yes. And I know these batteries don't really last very long, right? Like it's I use it for my heart rate, heart rate monitor, it dies every two or three months. That's because you're too strong. <laughs> no, no, no. That's because, no, that's because I never ride it, so it's just sitting there <laughs> and it's just draining battery. Okay, I mean, they probably do last, they don't I mean, they are, they are disposable items, they are consumable items. That's why I carry a spare. But, uh, sorry, probably not the, the, you are probably not the right person to ask, but why would Shimano build uh, round batteries in here when you already have the battery at the seat post? Oh no, you can actually connect it over. You could connect it with a wire, but they are giving you the option of making it fully wireless. Oh. Yeah, so there's no wire there. I it's see. It's just wireless. Although, some people do say that when you have a wire there, the shifting is faster. Again. So, they are going to SRAM. Towards Sorry? They are going to copy like, they are copying like SRAM, right? Wireless, and then it sounds a bit laggy. Yeah, so they say if you want the shifting to be even crispier, you can actually connect the, the wire one. over. That's so, what they do say. you specifically tell them not to put the wire in? Or it just came like no, that? No, people just... No, actually, if you buy a Chelsea, people are more likely to not put the wire in. It takes you request to put the wire in. Mm. Okay. So yeah, so I have a spare tube, I have a stance dart, I have a air canister because it's 2022, who's got time to pump their tires? <laughs> I have a canister. 
Yep. I have a multi tool. 36 tool. Wait, I don't know. Are, are you going camping or something? Is there a tent in there? <coughs> Why am I going camping? <laughs> nah, I just use safe having 36. <laughs> in fact, I've never used more than four tools inside. I have a tire patch. I God knows why I have a tire patch. I don't know why I carry it. I just carry it because why not? And I have a quick link inside. Mm. And sandpaper. What's the sandpaper for? It came with it. <laughs> but what is it I'm meant to be used here. for? Okay, originally when people use butyl tires, they sort of sand it down and then oh, stick the thing on it. Okay. I mean, I was too lazy to open so I just... No, wait, it literally, works. literally a bike shop on, on the move. If I was a bike shop on the move, I have more things behind. So what do you I'm carry behind? Oh my god. Okay. When I go on my Audex, I actually like fill these things with crap inside. Sorry, uh, okay, so that's that's all on your, your lunchbox. I hope that answers your questions, those who answered the uh, yeah, question. Yeah, tons of things inside. They are very useful things. <laughs> and and I just noticed sitting over here, your uh, your Garmin camera, what's that thingy that's behind it? What's the Varia? Yeah, but what's that coin looking thing that's hooked to your... Oh, uh, this? Yeah. Oh, it's just a handphone. Lit you know handphone, they have these rings for people who are unable to hold their phones properly. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, like so a... for people with butterfingers, they have this so when they drop it, it doesn't smash someone's foot. So you put it there just so in case the thing case drops. drops. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's just in just in case. Like life is all about the just in case. I just want to tell a funny story. Just since you brought up the CO two, the last time I had a puncture at the um, TMCR, right? Uh, I used the CO two canister, and it's been a very long time since I last used it. Uh, I think that's a good thing. But yes, it is a very good thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, when I used it, right, I kind of forgot how to do it. So I think I didn't twist the uh, the adapter properly. So air wasn't being released into the tube. So when mm. I did it right, the whole thing literally exploded in front of my face. Gosh. It just flew out of the... Thank goodness it wasn't tubeless. You look, you look quite unpresentable. It was, it was like, a, like a CO2 bomb, man. It's like, boom! And like, I was deaf for like a good 10 seconds. So I think... Do you know how to... Have you used the CO2 canister before? I have used three CO2 canisters before and we have failed to, re to inflate the tyres. <laughs> That's why I always bring CO2 canisters and a manual hand pump, just in case I, I have a off. manual hand pump, it's on the other side. Oh my goodness. Because if someone does need to reinflate the tire, I'm not giving them my CO2 canister, you can take the pump. <laughs> this is for myself. <laughs> uh, it's one CO2 canister, it's about like what, 5 bucks? No, it's less. If you go shoppy, you can get one for 2 bucks. Oh, okay. okay. I bought a box of 12 for like 24. Uh. Edgar's still supposed to take 6 off me, he hasn't taken them off yet. He still owes me 12 bucks. <laughs> Now the whole whole YouTube world. Yes, Edgar, you still owe me twelve dollars for the CO two canisters. <laughs> okay, uh, probably just gonna pick another three more questions. We we we, we are spending too much time. No, I can't fit this back in. I have no idea how to put this back in. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap! How did I put this in? Well, okay. yeah, well, you're fixing this up. Yeah, well, I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> um. Oh my goodness, this is hilarious. Someone asked if is if if whether you got the wrong size for the frame. Nope, it is the correct size. Okay. Uh, if it's if I got the size bigger, yeah, this would be even shorter, and I look like I will look like that uh, mm. time machine guy. Mm. I can go, I can slam it more, but uh, lazy. <laughs> Where I got time? I'm trying to filter out the stupid questions. Just hold on. Aren't the stupid questions the fun ones? <laughs> you asked my question, eh? The, the <laughs> WD forty one. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, uh. Since he asked, so his question is. Uh, why don't you use WD-40 to clean your drivetrain? Why would I use... You're, not, you're never supposed to use WD-40 on your drivetrain. WD-40 is meant to remove moisture. It's not a lubricant. Only <laughs> idiots use WD-40. I'm sorry for saying this. I don't think anyone uses WD-40, man. You'll be surprised. Like, every no, but day, WD-40 has a bike-specific lubricant. Version, right? Yes. Okay, so I think it's, uh, we need to quantify that question. WD-40, in terms of the general one that they say, if it's meant to, become, if you're meant to make it loose, use WD-40. You tighten, you use duct tape. Mm. That WD-40. Mm. You're not supposed to use your bicycle on any parts, I'm sorry. So, but you'll be surprised every day, you will always find someone continue to surprise you at how low the intelligence of humanity can go. And they will tell you WD-40 is meant for a bicycle and your chain, for instance, because it removes dirt and I'm sorry, it does not. That thing is meant to remove moisture, okay? And that's all it's supposed to, it's meant to loosen parts by removing moisture and a bit of the oxidation and corrosion. Mm. If you put it on your chain, you're going to leave crap and bits of it inside and if you try and grease it again, it's you're not going to have a fun time. If you really want to clean this bicycle, the chain properly, you degrease it using a proper degreaser. Of course, you won't, be, you won't remove the thing stuck in the roller and pins. For that, you actually need to heat it up and actually get it to expand so that there is space for the crap inside to come out. You need to displace the things out. But how do you ever do that? I've never heard of anyone heating it up and trying Rexing to... Waxing up? Oh... Rexing. 
Okay. Is that waxing? I'm sorry, but I am an ardent fan of waxing. It is the laziest man's solution to the cleanest what kind of possible. Wax? Oh, I'm using molten speed wax. <laughs> I mean, I can just pay fifty dollars. It sends me the wax. I don't need to think about what to get, mm -hmm. and I know it will work. Okay, uh, quick one just to wrap up. Last two questions: How good is the CJ power meter? It tells me exactly how weak I am. <laughs> okay, so pretty accurate. I'm gonna assume I am a weak cyclist. The power there shows me that I am weak, <laughs> so I will assume that to be very, very accurate. <laughs> Last question: That Garmin Varia mm. maybe too low for max effectiveness mm. will may be interfering with the detection cone that is true i will probably raise it up but the moment i still tweaking things so i mean okay when there are things here i will probably move it up so at the moment i still like this bicycle to me is still a it's still a work in progress i'm not at the point like my ss7 where i knew this is my setup really i'm still tweaking things i will probably shift things around when i'm sure that this is my final setup Mm. I'm still changing the handlebar, I'm still changing the saddle height, I'm still changing even the saddle, I'm not even using my power mirror. Oh yeah, so, yeah. you were using the power mirror? Yeah, I was using the power mirror, it's not even what, power what mirror. What saddle now. is this? Uh, it's, a, it's a women's saddle. What? Why? It's the Mimic saddle. Okay, I actually bought it so that when I'm not using it, I give it to my wife. Uh. But because I want to test the strength of the SWAT system with two full water bottles, and if it breaks, I don't want my Xbox power mirror to break. Mm. Uh, rather this break. Mm. So I borrowed it from her okay. temporarily, and I'm using it for now. If it works out fine, it survives the bumps and stuff, I will then put it back, put my power mirror back on. Mm. So yeah. Thank you. That is the end. Uh, don't think if, I, I normally don't think people watch until this far, but I'll give you the last 30 seconds to wrap up or say anything that you want to say. Mm. I think the important thing about cycling is to really just enjoy cycling, whether you are enjoying it for the purpose of cycling, enjoying it for the gear. I don't think that you should also Pay attention what people say. Like some people say, oh, you're riding Pinarello, riding so slow, you're riding a giant, ride so fast, a time to upgrade. Don't, why bother about what they say? Even if you ride Pinarello, just ride it. You don't have to travel at 50 km per hour just to earn the right to cycle your bicycle. What matters is that you were able to affordably get your bicycle, oh, not I shouldn't say affordable, but you were able to get your bicycle and be financially responsible at the same time. So if you want to get the upgrade part, save for it. Mm. And when you get a bicycle, be proud of the bicycle you have. You earned it. You paid for it. It is your bicycle. Just because you are not the strongest cyclist in the world, just because you're not the strongest cyclist in the group, doesn't mean you don't have the right to be proud of your Pinarello Dogma F with Bora 60, is it? Or whatever it is. Just be happy with a bicycle. You don't have to be strong to ride a TT bike. Similarly, you don't need to ride a tri-band and then say, oh, I'm riding so fast, but I'm still on a tri-band. One of the strongest cyclists I know rides a tri-band. He pulls me along West Coast Highway and TMC. Uh. So, enjoy cycling, enjoy again and be proud of it. Don't listen to what people say, just do what you want. Uh, yeah. A round of applause to Mr. Aaron for that Oscar speech. <laughs> Beautifully said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's just the time of the night and have a good drink. <laughs> okay, um, Aaron, thank you again for okay, coming. Thanks. This is the second round. I am sure this is not going to be your last time. No I want to make this my last time. I'm broke. <laughs> gonna, I am broke. You're going to come back in the next six months. Gonna, I will not buy a Dogma F, Dogma G. You're going to come back next in the next six months with another bike. I will see you soon. And I hope not. Yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Okay, thanks for having me around. We're done. Thank you. Driving all day, searching all night. Can't seem to focus this double side. This is a tale, sworn in a sight.